So while Kemp is working on getting the rocker panel covers off, uh, preparing the uh, side of the vehicle for the rock sliders, I'm going to go ahead and start disassembling all the front assembly here, the grill and the bumper, getting it ready to put our uh, bumper on. The first step you want to do is you want to pull the grill. There's four tabs on top, pull out. Down here, towards the bottom, on the bottom section inside, is a tab on either side. Push it up. You can hear it click loose. Just pull the grill right off. Now the next step is to get the headlights out, and they come out as one assembly. Now you can use our specialized Land Rover headlight removal tool, which is a nice strong shoestring. You just hook it underneath the clip here that slides in the upward position, give it a little tug up, it will come loose and you do the same on the outside here. And you want to make sure it doesn't come up too far, make sure those holes are lined up there. Now on the back side you have the wiring harness that goes in on the top of the of the plug. On the top of the plug here, you'll see you can just push down the tab, give it some wiggle back and forth, and it slides right out and it's out. So what we want to do now is there are screws all around the top of the bumper here and as well as underneath the bumper. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all those screws. Use on all these screws on top is an eight millimeter socket on my, on my uh, little power uh, drive here to zip all these out really quick. And it goes real quick. Get all these out. And then we need to, these are plastic Phillips head screws in this little piece of trim, so you want to be careful when you're removing these, and we're going to get those next. So these little plastic screws, you just got to go real easy pulling them out because they're, they're plastic. We have four bolts on the underneath on uh, four tabs, and they're Torx 30. So, uh, so once you get those broke loose, they're really easy to take off, and you can just take them off with your fingers if you need to. And they come right off, and then that'll free up the underside of the bumper. There we go. And then we have two Phillips head. <clears throat> bolts on the outer trim pieces that we need to remove. What we have here is two trim bolts that we want to remove and we've cranked the tire far to the right as we can go so that we can get in here easily with the electric drill. This one's a little trickier up here but if you're careful you can get that one that way we'll be able to pull this trim out of the way so that we can get the bolt that's back here. Okay, Okay. Well, we're going to need to remove the trim off of this fender for the installation of the front bumper. Now there are two clips here and here that you'll have to remove that I showed you on the uh, rock slider install. There's also right in the center at the top there are, there are two clips. We're going to pop the one closer to the back of the vehicle. There's also one of these clips that's located at about 11 o'clock, if you're looking at the tire, that need to be removed. What we need to do now before remove, removing the fender trim is to remove one screw that's located behind the headlight. Once you have the headlight out, it's easy to reach. 
Now that we have that screw and the clips removed, we're going to go ahead and remove the trim piece. Set those aside, we'll be trimming them up to reinstall them later. Now on the front bumper now, there are two Torx 30 uh, bolts on both sides. We want to go ahead and pull those off to continue the removal of the front bumper. As you see some of them are loose already. Especially if you've been driving off-road very much, you might find some loose bolts up here. Take those off. The bumper should be pretty loose now. It's got a little tab on the back of this tab. You can push your finger in there to push that out to get it to slide out. So on the top here where we removed those three plastic screws, we need to go ahead and pop out the housings that they came out of. I use a flathead screwdriver. This is the housing. We just pop these out. There's three of them. We will not be reusing these. And this little flashing piece will come out and the bumper is loose and we'll pull it out and this is where it's good if you have an extra hand you can get all the wiring in the back disconnected. What you can do back here is kind of hold it out, the bumper out and I'm gonna pop loose the, uh, the <coughs> fittings for the fog lights it's got a, just a little compression fitting on it. So you have two plugs right here on the passenger side behind the, where the light was. And we're gonna need to get these loose. And we should be able to push the tabs down on these and wiggle them apart. Try not to skin your fingers. These are the two plugs for all the wiring that go through the sensors and the fog lights on the front bumper. So then our front bumper will come loose, come down. And now we just need to disconnect the hose for the uh, light washers. Uh, there we go. And they pull right out just like that. <laughs> when we put these back in, we can put a little silicone around this and when we slip it in there and it'll hold them in place real nicely. Also keep the water from coming through there. Just use your screwdriver to pop the little wire clips. and then just pull them all out, same way. Okay, we're now removing the uh, parking sensors out of the front bumper. They're held in with, with two clips. Now you have to actually move the clips out pretty far before they'll actually release. So it is easier to have four hands instead of two. You, you pry the clips out. If you can push from the front, it also helps a little bit too. And the sensor will slide out. So we also want to pull the, the housings out and they have three areas where they clip in to the bumper and just depress those and kind of push the housing forward and you can kind of go around the circle on them 
put your fingernail from the front side in there and they'll pull out. And we do that to all four of them. You go ahead and, and unhook the lights or the uh, socket from the fog lights, and it's got a tab you depress and pull it back. And once you have all the little wire retainer clips undone, your wiring harness will come right out. So then we Set this aside because we'll be reusing this and the last thing we want to get out of the bumper are the fog lights. On this particular install we're not going to reuse the uh, windshield or the, the dirt spreaders yes, for the, the headlights so we don't have to worry about pulling those out but if you're going to do that there's just two clips underneath here. It's a metal clip. You just pop it out, un unhook your hoses and uh, they come right out. The hoses have little things you depress and they, generally speaking, will come right off of the tube and you pull them right out. We require pliers. At this point we're ready to remove the stock steel bumper. There are four, four bolts, two on the top, two on the bottom on each side. There's also the controller for the air suspension here that will need to pop out. It simply lifts up and, and it'll come right off. And we're just going to let that hang. Be careful not to pull on it. And now we're going to remove the bolts. Okay, now that we've removed the eight 13 millimeter bolts that hold the front bumper on, I'm now removing the 10 millimeter bolt that holds the, the windshield washer reservoir to the bumper. Now that we've completed this, we're actually ready to remove the bumper. The bumper will be held in place, hanging on a couple of clips. And to take it off, we just simply lift up gently on the bumper. And the bumper will pull out. When you pull off the bumper, just be careful that you're not pulling any wires. The next step in the process is to remove this here. Now, this is held on by some eight millimeter uh, hex head screws, and the screws come in through the back. The passenger side is fairly easy. The driver's side is very difficult to see and to reach. So if, if you're not afraid to um, cut off the, the end of the bracket where the screw goes, it'll save you a lot of time. Otherwise, you know, you're really going to have to uh, try to figure out a way to get down in there. If you have a flex extender that you can put an 8 millimeter socket or net driver on, that'll be helpful. The one on the passenger side of the vehicle, you can reach through the open area where the light headlight goes. And removing the screw is kind of a long process because you can't turn the ratchet very far at it at a time. Once you've removed that, you can see that that releases the one side. Now we're going to move on to the other side. So 
So now that we finally got that loose over there using a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, we went ahead and pulled this apart and this is your exterior temperature sensor. You want to make sure that you get this out. You have to lift up and down. There we go. And it's got little little metal clips that clip on the back here that you need to pop loose. And then you want to go ahead and pull the uh, temperature sensor. What you can do is just unplug it so that you can get this one. There's a clip here and you want to just pull this off of this metal right here. It just slides out. You'll have to use a pair of screw, uh, screwdriver to get that done. Just like that. This we're not going to reuse, so we're good there. Pop that back in there so we don't lose track of it. We'll be putting that attaching all. So on the washer bottle that we're removing, there's one 10 millimeter bolt on the top that we have to get as well. And if you uh, have the swivel for your 3H drive on your 10 millimeter socket, it makes it really easy to get right in there and get that bolt out. There it is. Now on, the, on this we'll have to disconnect all the, the wiring for the for the uh, pumps and stuff for the washer. Out. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and just pull out the pumps from the bottle. You want to be careful not to, to break anything. This stuff is plastic. It can get fragile after a while. actually does come apart here makes it a little easier to pull out so all this stuff now if you're not using your front windshield front headlight mud makers you won't need to uh, reuse this particular pump you can just disconnect that sell it on eBay this pump just for your windshield washers. We're going to put it up inside so that we can put it into the um, Defender bottle that the customer got for, for uh, his truck along with the level gauge for uh, the fluid. One thing you'll want to do is right up in here behind the headlight assembly there's a spot where the wiring is mounted in there just pop that loose so that you can get more <coughs> more room to uh, go ahead and pull all this stuff up into the top into the engine bay. That's all going to go right up in there. Make sure you keep your headlight socket out here. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, winch plate on and which uh, also is the main main mount for the bumper. Do that. Two people of course makes it a lot easier. And we'll just hold it up in here. Put your stock screws back in. Come this way a little while. Yeah. I should get this bolt out. Just get one started and it'll stay up there. And you put the remaining four in. Okay, we've gone ahead and got all eight bolts started. 
and the winch mounting plate. So now we're just going to go through and tighten them all up. Okay, we're going to be installing a Warren XD 9000 winch in this bumper. We have the uh, bumper mounting plate ready. We're actually going and putting the square nuts in the holes. The hardware is all supplied with the winch. Then we're going to set the winch in here, bolt it using the supplied hardware from the bottom, and then we'll run all of our electrical and get it hooked up. You're lifting this up in there, keep it nice and flat so that these nuts don't fall out of there. Because once you get it up in, you won't be able to get the back nuts back in there. On the parking sensors, on the two that are on the inside of the vehicle, in order to get these to be pointing the correct direction, we actually need to flip them from the housing from one side to the other. And to be able to do that, we need to trim these little key slots off so that we can put them in the opposite side of the bumper housing. And it's really simple, just be careful. Use a sharp X-Acto knife and just trim right down the side. Go slow and easy. Got to kind of wiggle it back and forth to get it to, to cut. Just all the way down. You want to be careful not to let it slip and damage the ring of the sensor housing. And then just make sure it's flush with the side of the housing. And you want to do that on all four of these pieces on both of the inside. Ready? So what we're doing here is we have the bumper set on the uh, winch bracket and this is really a two-person job because you need to make sure the bumper top plate is flat down against the winch bracket and then I'm laying a straight edge across the top of the bumper to get a starting point that I'm going to mark on the fender flare here and I'm just kind of move this straight edge around leaving it on the top of the bumper getting a, a nice mark along this fender flare and this is a, just a starting point. I'm going to cut this fender flare long so that we can trim it to fit real nice and snug against the bumper when it's on there. Okay. All right, what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and trim where we had marked. And you just need to trim the little edge off of the, the metal part of, of the uh, front fender, otherwise known as the, the front wing. And um, we're going to do that with our die grinder which is the easiest way to do it. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. I like to wear gloves when I'm doing this. And uh, make sure that everybody around you is uh, safe as well. Are you safe, Kep? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> Get it started up. Might have to kickstart it. of aluminum that won't be missed by anybody and if you get into this fender skirt a little bit don't worry about that because we need to trim that up as well to fit the back side of the bumper all right
So while Kemp is holding the bumper secure where it's going to sit, I'm going to mark the fender skirt, the plastic inner fender skirt, just kind of following the line of the bumper all the way down so we can trim that so it'll fit nicely. And then on the back side, you need to put two relief cuts in the lip of this so that it'll tuck inside the fender, the, the, uh, the bumper on this back side. Okay, and make sure you you have plenty of room along here on the steel so that the bumper and the uh, fender skirt, the steel part won't hit and cause a rattle or anything like that. What we're doing here is we're putting on the uh, screws for the, uh, the nuts for the uh, fog light assemblies. And how you do how we're doing that is you put on a regular quarter twenty uh, flat nut first on all three posts, then a flat washer on all three posts, and then the assembly, and then another flat washer and a nylock nut, all which will be supplied with the bumper when you get the bumper. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking a 7 seconds drill bit and I'm going to very carefully drill out the smaller hole on this bracket. Okay, that way it'll fit over the thread. Now when we're putting these on, we're going to have to fit it in there and the, the uh, all thread pieces may have to be moved around just a little bit. You can just kind of adjust them by hand, moving them around so that they'll fit right over into the holes. And. Uh, Sometimes you won't be able to get the flat washer to fit up against here. So you just get rid of the flat washer and slide those on just like that. And just adjust it so that the, the housing lines up nicely with the front of the bezel on the bumper. So you get a, a nice uh, alignment there for the light to go out. So once you get get your bezel all adjusted up, you just want to make sure that the glass on the front of the bezel of the, the light housing is not touching the metal. You just want a little bit of space back there so that it doesn't rub on the metal. And then put your flat washers over. And then the nylock nuts will go on for the final securing of the fog light housings. And just tighten those down snug. You don't want to go too terribly tight. So we've gone ahead and, and uh, reattached our, our parking sensor wire here and here. And what you want to do on the parking sensor loom, wire loom, is you want to go ahead and where these wires are taped together to make them shorter. You want to just take those pieces of tape off so you can extend the sensors 
all the way down on all four of them so that you have the longest amount of wire to reach forward to the bumper. This wire loom needs to go behind the winch uh, tray. Okay, hold right there. Plug your uh, plug your uh, fog light in. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my dead blow hammer, which is not metal, it's plastic, and lightly tapping around the housing for the parking sensor because it's such a tight fit. If you just lightly tap it in there, it'll pop right in there. And then I'm going to take that extension, the 3 8 extension, and the little tabs that are on the inside that hold the sensor in, I'm just going to lightly tap them to get them so that they're behind the steel of the bumper and we'll do all three of them and then the sensor will slide right in. So I'm going to real lightly tap the back side of the sensor to set it in place. You'll feel when it's in there because it will stop. And they're in there. On these center sensors here, they actually go inside the winch tray. So if you notice on them, there's a notch here and there's a little key there on the sensor and it slides in there. So what you have to do on these is make sure that this sensor is down so it's not going to hit the side of the winch plate housing. So when you place that in there, you just kind of want to pay attention to that so that you don't have to pull them back out again. So they'll just have to go in just like that. So this, these two are a little tough to get to because you got to slide the bumper back as you're doing it. So what I've done on this side so that the sensor housing can point in the correct direction. I had to shave the little divot off of the sensor that pokes out that aligns it in there so that it can sit in a different position inside the housing in order for it to fit in there properly. That way it won't run into the uh, side of the winch, winch uh, holder and it should just go in there and after just three short minutes winch assembly winch assembly is complete front light assemblies are back in fender flares are cut and in place fender flares have been cut and in place